So Razer just came out with a gaming soundbar. It's called the Leviathan V2. Now, this is a successor to the popular Leviathan that was launched back in 2015. That's almost seven years ago. And you might be asking yourselves, why now? Well, according to Razer, the global summer market has been accelerating in the past few years with people spending more time at home, uh, setting up their ideal gaming slash entertainment setup. But if anything, this video is gonna be more about why simplifying a design might not be the right thing to do, especially when it comes to a better user experience. So here we are with the Leviathan V2. It's priced at $250 US. That's $50 more than the original Leviathan. So what exactly are you getting for that price bump? Not to mention my go-to slash all-round gaming soundbar has been the Sound Blaster Katana V2 by Creative Labs that's priced at $330. So while the Leviathan V2 is cheaper, can it actually give the Katana V2 a run for its money? Man, lots of V2s. I hope it doesn't get too confusing. Anyways, let's start with the exterior design. And what Razer has done here is simply refine the look of the V2 compared to the V1. The drivers are housed inside this matte black plastic chassis that honestly looks like just another soundbar. Uh, the dimensions are almost identical, except for the depth since they managed to pack two passive radiator drivers inside the V2. Um, it's certainly a lot more compact than the Katana V2, so you shouldn't have any issues placing this uh, underneath your monitor. Razer was pretty thoughtful to include an extra pair of interchangeable rubber feet uh, that enables you to angle the soundbar so you get better directional audio output. The V2 does come with a dedicated downfiring subwoofer that's also very compact uh, compared to the one that comes with the Katana V2. So overall, for a compact space, the Leviathan V2 check marks the setup process. The control buttons are located at the top. They're tactile and easy to get to. As you can see, there's a source button, a Bluetooth button, main power, and volume adjustments. Unfortunately, you do not get a remote control to adjust any settings on the fly. And remember, according to Razer, this is a gaming soundbar designed for your gaming PC and nothing else. So if you want to adjust the volume or control the RGB lighting, which I'll get to shortly, um, you would either have to use the volume adjust functions on your keyboard or through Razer Synapse or on the soundbar itself. As for the IO, you only get a single USB-C port that plugs in directly to your PC, power in, and a proprietary port to connect the subwoofer. And that's it. They've eliminated the optical connector. There's no HDMI ARC support. You don't even get an aux input, let alone a headphone jack to quickly plug in a pair of headphones. To be honest, I'm extremely disappointed with this I.O. setup. I mean, USB is okay, but if you're hooking this up to a laptop, you're taking up a USB port. So having an aux input would have been nice. Not to mention, if there's something wrong with the source, you're limited to troubleshooting options other than using Bluetooth to figure out if it's either an issue with the unit itself or the port. USB also comes with, guess what? Driver issues. So there's no fallback to analog if you find some of those. And let me tell you, I found some. More on that a little bit later. The main problem with this is that it completely limits how and where you can use the Leviathan V2. Wanna use it with your TV as part of a home theater system? Can't do that. What about just controlling the volume from a distance if you aren't streaming audio over Bluetooth from your phone or other device? For $250, I want all those options, Razer, and you're giving me none of them. Actually, Mike has some thoughts on this too. His rant is coming in three, two, one, go. Well guys, Mike here, and I just needed to hop onto camera here because as an original Leviathan owner, I've got a couple of things to say, and I just wanted to sort of like let out this rant. Because what Razer is doing here with this new speaker is endemic of the industry. They're trying to simplify it, but maybe simplify it a little bit too much. And what that is doing is it's just removing usability for folks. So good example is that lack of a 3.5 millimeter jack. And I know it might sound old fogey and whatever, but it is critical, especially if something goes wrong with the software. At least you have that analog backup. The other thing that the original Levithion had is that SPDIF or optical port. And look, this is not something from a bygone era because I look at something like this, this motherboard here, the Z690 that I'm working on with the project, and it has that optical interface. It has the 3.5 millimeter. This is not 
rocket science folks. Not only that is the USB-C. A lot of PCs, especially when it comes to laptops, they are not including a lot of USB-C connectors. So you have to use one of those very, very valuable connectors to plug in to the new Levithion unless you want to do Bluetooth. And we all know all of the problems that go on between a PC and Bluetooth. Look, that's my rant as an original Levithion owner. I'm not happy with what Razer is doing here. But anyways, I'm gonna let you go back to your regular dose of Eber. Speaking of Bluetooth, it does support the Bluetooth 5.2 protocol, so you do get the benefit of low latency connection, and you can pair up to eight devices, which is kind of neat. However, Keep in mind that there is no LDAC support, but instead you're limited to AAC and SBC, and that's pretty much it. Uh, now, I didn't experience any issues with range in my small 200 square foot studio. Then again, if this is plugged into your PC at your desk setup most of the time, would you even consider using Bluetooth? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, just to change things up a bit, I'm gonna sneak in and talk about today's video sponsor, Keoxia. Did you know that this year marks the 35th anniversary of NAND flash memory? From the first use of flash memory until now, Keoxix technologies have been there pushing the limits of what's possible. From the evolution of hard drives to SSDs, from CDs to MP3 players and smartphones, or from camera film to SD cards, they've been there every step of the way. And today's Keoxys SSDs with Bix 3D flash memory are some of the most exciting tech yet. There's the BG5 that packs an incredible amount of space into one tiny and efficient footprint. The CD7 pushes the absolute bleeding edge for data centers uh, with a PCI Gen 5 interface that offers double the bandwidth when compared to a Gen 4 drive. And of course, the XD6 is an SSD that might look like a regular M.2 drive, but it's completely hot swappable. If you want to know more about Keoxia and how they're continuing to offer some of the most exciting storage solutions around, head to the link in the description down below. Okay, back to the soundbar. Where do I continue? Oh wait, actually, let's talk about RGB or the chroma lighting because it is a Razer product and you should be expecting a little bit of that bling with the Leviathan V2. It's a simple, thin, well-diffused LED strip that's hidden underneath that looks absolutely gorgeous, guys. Razer has some of the best lighting setups on their products, and this will perfectly complement your gaming setup. You can also choose to completely turn it off as well. There are four lighting effects that you can also choose from, which includes breathing, spectrum cycling, static, and wave. Uh, you can also use their advanced Chroma Studio to fine tune your style. And remember, you will absolutely need Razer Synapse to adjust these settings. Uh, aside from lighting controls, you can switch between stereo or THX spatial audio and play around with EQs, and that's about it. Now, if you want to use your smartphone to control the lighting, Razer offers the Chroma RGB app for both iOS and Android, and the process is pretty straightforward, except if you want to adjust any audio settings, um, you will need to download another app called Audio. Now, this is where you can either use it as a remote to control volume and play pause audio. You can also use this to adjust the EQs or play around with different audio presets, basically the same stuff that you can get to do with Synapse, and that's pretty much it. Keep note that if you do switch the source to USB, you won't have access to the EQs. My only issue here is I absolutely don't understand what's the point of having two separate apps to control the settings on the soundbar. It's so pointless in my opinion. I was told that Razer is working on a unified app, but there is no official confirmation on when that's gonna be released. I mean, this is not what expected for a day one product launch. Now, what about sound quality? Remember, Razer has upgraded the drivers on the V2 compared to the original Leviathan. So this time you're getting two 95 millimeter full range drivers, a couple of 20 millimeter tweeters, passive radiator drivers that I mentioned earlier located at the back, and then the subwoofer. The output is very balanced with crispy details on the trebles with no distortion whatsoever. I was really surprised by the amount of power packed inside this compact soundbar. Uh, my comfort volume setting was around 25% and anything louder than that, it actually gets way too loud, especially for my tiny studio space. So if you have a lot of room to fill, this soundbar can easily handle that, no problem. Uh, the subwoofer gives you a nice little kick when you're watching action-packed movies or when you're even gaming specifically with FPS titles. Uh, it's boomy and dynamic as you increase the power or the volume output. The mid-ranges are gentle, but it's not as emphasized as the Katana V2. Uh, I also felt like the overall body of the sound wasn't as bright or focused as the Katana. 
But keep in mind that audio reviews are highly subjective. You might not feel the same way when you get to listen to this in person. Uh, but overall, I honestly can't find a reason to downplay the Leviathan V2 in terms of actual audio performance, because it's really good for the compact size. But it's only really good when it works. Now, before I get into this, I do want to preface things by saying my experience here basically highlights why running exclusively on USB audio with all of its potential driver and software issues, especially with Synapse involved, is a bad, bad idea. You see, randomly, all of a sudden, the subwoofer on the V2 stopped working. I tried to unplug and replug the USB cable. I rebooted the soundbar, but nothing really fixed that issue. And then a few days later, there was no audio output whatsoever. I tried my MacBook Pro and things were back to normal, except the sub was completely out. Then I tried my Microsoft Surface Pro 8 and it was flawless. But the interesting thing about all of this is that neither of those devices had Razer Synapse installed beforehand. All the problems came up when using the Leviathan on, guess what? It weighs a laptop. Yep, you heard that right. Now, you'd think with Synapse already installed, it would work flawlessly, but it didn't. Now, I'm not sure if this is some software conflict or whatever, but yeah, these are the problems that happen when you rely on USB and some janky software to power an audio device. Um, it was really frustrating, guys, and quite frankly, not something that I expected for a brand new soundbar in 2022. But this only highlights how something that could and should have been simple can get so utterly and completely messed up by software. I mean, when the Leviathan V2 works, it works really, really well, and it sounds great. But when it doesn't, or when the software falls flat on its face, you're gonna be paying the price in frustration and time wasted. And having to rely so heavily on software for what should have been a simple audio device is just a huge mistake. I mean, Razer, what happened here? So. Is the Leviathan V2 from Razer really worth $250? I don't think so, because it's lacking so many features that you'd expect from a typical soundbar, like flexible I.O. inputs, a headphone output, maybe a built-in microphone, or even a small remote control to adjust the soundbar settings instead of relying on two separate apps on your smartphone. Personally, I would spend an extra $80 and just get the Katana V2 because you're getting so much and I mean so much for that price premium. And it's certainly worth every single penny. Uh, the thing with Razer is that they're really trying too hard. Uh, if it was $200, maybe, uh, because when it works well, the sound quality is absolutely incredible. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about the Razer Leviathan V2 gaming soundbar. Let us know what you guys think about it in the comments. I'm Ibar with Hurricane X, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Spend responsibly.